fantastic initiative here, the, the Bank of Ireland Celtic Challenge. Give me your thoughts on the tournament as a whole. I think it's a brilliant, a brilliant opportunity for all the players to develop. It's a real development uh, role it does, whether for better players or for the, you know, the counties that are probably struggling to develop hurling. It's a great, great opportunity. We just seen that with Leitrim along, along for there a moment ago, and uh, you know, it's a brilliant, brilliant initiative. And uh, we have a big weekend of hurling tomorrow ahead of us, um, and I think it's a great way to start about it because it's it's the youth that we need coming through, and we need to spread the word of hurling all over the country. And I think this competition does that. Yeah, fantastic initiative from Bank of Ireland, and as you. Said, we get to see a lot of young players getting the strut their stuff. How important is that for a young hurler to get an opportunity like this in a big stage? Well, I caught some of your questions there with the, with the band in the background, but uh, I think what it, it is a massive opportunity. I think everyone gets game time as well, which is brilliant. And, and some of the tries, the uh, best and fairest player there, just the awards are just given out. It's a brilliant, brilliant initiative. And, uh, you know, it's a brilliant opportunity to come up here to the big grounds and play in Tullamore as well and experience that big feeling. And, uh, you know, I, I just think it's brilliant. And I suppose it is the Bank of Ireland uh, Celtic Challenge. And I, I was thinking that this morning. It is a challenge. You know, it's not a challenge for the Kilkenny's, the Tips, the Corks, the Limericks, the Clares to keep playing. But it is for the Langtrum and the Leitrim. And I think by having something like today, we'll keep him playing the game. And that's what we need is, is that initiative to keep him flowing. Henry, brilliant. Thank you. Enjoy the game and enjoy the day. Thank you. So you're very welcome back to Board Nabono Connor Park and Tullamore is our second final of the afternoon here and it's a Kerry Dublin meeting as well Dublin Clark taking on Kerry in this particular encounter and I can tell you something already there's a, a lot of people in here looking forward to this particular encounter and let's start off by giving you a look at the Dublin team a number of players have performed very well for them en route to the final including Cormac Cullinan who has been exceptional at number 5 Liam Kiernan and Sam Stewart are the players who started the middle of the field Jack Keelty, as you've probably been seeing from some of the trailers and promos during the rounds, they have been absolutely fantastic. Rory O'Neill at centre half forward is another player to keep an eye on. Matthew Lynham from Castle Knock has been handed the number 14 jersey on the edge of the square, but plenty of strength to come in from the bench for Dublin Clark right throughout the course of this game as well as it develops. So now let's take a look at the men from the kingdom hurling alive and well in the county of Kerry, no doubt about it. Dara Quinlan, he from the Bally Duff Club, will start in goals this afternoon. Dara Slattery from Bally Duff, his club teammate, has been named in at full back as well. Dylan Moriarty is a player who has been going really well in midfield. Ronan Walsh on the half forward line is one of the chief playmakers on this team. While in the full forward line, Colin Walsh, number 14 from Bally Hague, will be a player that will be hoping uh, to have a major impact on proceedings. Kerry in their traditional green jerseys, the green and gold of the Kingdom and Dublin Clark in the well white and blue colours today the two teams going through their final warm up procedures we've had the excitement of uh, Leitrim winning the first title of the day here there's the two management teams John Hennessy, the man from Ballyduff who's entrusted by leading the Kingdom Challenge up here today and Martin Toot from New Barrow and Dublin in charge of their side from the sideline. Well, as we've mentioned, we've had the joy of Leitrim winning the Zamor of a traditional feel about this one two of the big hitters, Dublin and Kerry you always lick your lips in anticipation when these two go head to head. Absolutely, we're probably not used to seeing it uh, with a hurley and a schlitter but uh, we sh should be expecting a brilliant game here today both teams have been so impressive in the group stages, Kerry racking up some massive scores. 7-10 they scored against Clare in, in their round three game and also wins over Limerick, Sarsfields and, and a draw with North Cork. So you can just tell that Kerry are so impressive in this competition, so competitive. And Dublin Clark with a with a great win over Dublin Plunkett in a real thriller last week in, in Dunamore Ashburn. So we're all set up for a cracker here. Brian Kewan from the County of Galway is the match referee for this particular encounter as well. He's the man who's going to be in the middle of this. You've, I suppose, had the opportunity to look at some of these players last week in the semi-finals. There was uh, some wonderful games as well. So a number of players there would have caught your eye throughout the course of the week. One of the players that I managed to uh, was, was hugely impressed with from the various um, promos that were saying would have centred very much in the forward line. Young Keelty there has been in absolutely fantastic form throughout. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, they had an absolute battle with, with Dublin Plunkett's the, uh, both player sets of teams so uh, so familiar with each other, playing club together, and they really went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and Kielty really stood up last week, got some really impressive scores, but uh, from open play as well, his you know ball-winning ball winning ability, uh, really a player to keep an eye on in this game. Well, no doubt about it, the conditions absolutely perfect for Hurling here today. We witnessed that in the opening game, a match that was won by Leitrim, building their foundations in the opening half. Who's going to start this one? The better here of these two big rivals. And already you can see some of the changes being made by the Kingdom in that midfield area. They decided to put Ronan Walsh in there for the throw-in. And away we go. The second of the finals is underway here in Bordnamona. Connor Park and Tullamore. Early possession for the Kingdom. The ball batted downfield immediately there by Darren. And Nolan, the wing forward, looking to get a forward line. There are so many potential match winners into the game early on. Michael Kelleher is the man who goes down there low to try and gather that one. Players back with it to deal with the situation there for Dublin. A little bit scrappy, the possession early on here. But uh, the, the Dublin Clark team will be happy to get it out here to Evan McSherry. Works the ball over towards this near side of the field. But Kerry have managed to overturn possession once again. The Kingdom men going in. Colin Walsh, the full forward, working really hard. I can tell you, you can see the intensity in this game not a second been given on the ball in the early exchanges here and it's a, a guilt edge opportunity for the kingdom to hit the front early on yeah you can just tell it's going to be an absolute dog fight for possession here uh, number 12 there Nathan Gear and June really well for Kerry and um, we talked about their physicality earlier on their ball winning ability you're going to see that across the pitch here uh, so uh, and also back there, number 10 for Dublin Clark, John Kielty, back there winning, uh, winning ball. Kielty, edge opportunity of the opening score, and they're never going to miss that. That is put in and put over the bar by Dylan Moriarty. He opens up his account, and Kerry are leading here. It's Kerry one point, Dublin no score in the early exchanges, but there's an immediate counter-attack in play here as the Dublin side comes storming forward. Jack Murray trying to bring it over on the far side. The ball switched over towards this near side of the field, but well anticipated there by Ronan Walsh for the Kingdom and Ronan Walsh gets his clearance away here for Kerry it's been a, a fairly bright opening to this particular encounter the cornerback is Billy Daly under some pressure here to try and work the ball out from his uh, defensive position here and the Dublin players not giving him a second on it the intensity in this game the level of commitment in the tackle already is hugely striking and we've just played a minute and 53 seconds ball blocked close to the sideline out over the sideline it goes sideline ball for Kerry but what about the intensity here no place for the faint hearted down there absolutely no um, the, the physicality in this game so far as you said not being given a second on the ball um, and, and players really having to uh, think on their feet and, and they've done well though to win this one back however Ger Ryan making it real inroads he's got the full forward free here's Matthew Lynham coming through and Matthew Lynham has buried it in the back of the net well from the overturn of possession and Lynham was there to finish it that's an emphatic goal what what a start to the game for Dublin Clark. First of all, the run from Ger Ryan and the, the just the cleverness. Just look at the replay. There's the ball coming back in and look at that finish. Absolutely brilliant from Matthew Lynham. I don't think there's a goalkeeper well in the country that might have stopped that. Fantastic finish. Well, what a start we've had here to this game. It's uh, Kerry uh, who have one point and Dublin Clark have the goal. So it's Dublin Clark a goal. Kerry one point just to uh, confirm the scoreboard on that our graphics there are telling you uh, about that goal but it's a goal in fact for Dublin Clark here in the early exchanges so Dublin Clark have the goal and Kerry have the point now at this stage we've played three minutes and eight seconds here in the uh, in the opening half what an eventful start to the game Dublin Clark now after getting that goal will be anxious not to concede here immediately and their back line have done well to pick up the potentially dangerous situation ball won again for them over on the far side of the field Sam Stewart is going to be a player who's going to hope to win so much possession there as the sun comes out to greet these two teams here in the second final. Whistle sounds again from the referee. It'll be important for Kerry now maybe that they get the next score. Yeah, you can't take your eye off this ball, uh, this game for a second. The speed of the game is, is incredible. And referee Brian Keown is definitely going to have his work cut out to, to be keeping up with this play. Another opportunity to see the goal that has been the main talking point in the in the match so far as it dropped in there ever so dangerously. And the finish was absolutely emphatic. Meanwhile, at the other end, there's possibilities here for the men from Munster. And their number 17 is going forward. And that's Sean Brosnan. And Sean Brosnan floats the ball in and over the bar. And it's Kerry two points 
Dublin Clark one goal great score from Brosnan great score from the from the small parish of Ardfert so Kerry definitely have dangerous scores as well uh, it's just a matter of trying to close down the space for Dublin and work the ball up they're replying with typical Kerry confidence and here they come once again Colin Walsh gets the ball outside and possibilities here now for uh, Nathan Gurren trying to uh, move the ball inside there Nathan Gurren the wing forward he was the player free at the edge of the, sh of the square but again James Herbert back there to deal with the situation for Dublin Clark but we've just seen an injection of pace being given to the game as Liam Kiernan brings it forward here for Dublin Clark lovely piece of skill to get the ball under control there by Ronan Walsh quickly turns defence into attack but the ball went in really to no man's land well anticipated inside by Herbert once more Dublin of uh, Dublin Clark that is have started the game well leading but uh, with the goal that they've got but really carry have launched a few meaningful attacks since and it's right in the mix here just one point separating the teams in the early exchanges the two teams you could argue maybe still looking to settle down in this particular encounter but there's hardly a second been given on the ball here just look at this for pressure once again it's the Dublin team who are going to emerge in possession and they get it down here to a forward line that still or perhaps can show us their full capability as uh, Kieran McLaughlin goes in to try and gather the ball back on the carry side it comes once again a running game being deployed here and the full forward has dropped out deep to gather this one Colin Walsh Colin Walsh moving in field good strong running from him now can he link up inside with Gurn once more whistle sounds of the referee well it's a chance for everybody to draw a breath here commentary team and <laughs> included and it's another free there and here's the opportunity maybe to see it there once again fantastic run coming in pass given outside to Gurn Aaron, lovely step inside his marker and we're just waiting to see where the infringement took place there it is and uh, a guilt edge opportunity here now um, from that from the free that's about to come 45 meters out from goal and they'll be hoping maybe now to bring themselves back on level terms and restore parity here in O'Connor Park in Bordnamon O'Connor Park in Tullamore once again the free taker Dylan Moriarty and Dylan Moriarty has slotted it between the posts and the sides are level it's Kerry three points Dublin Clark a goal what a start to this one. What a start. The game has been played at 90 miles an hour. But just to go back to that goal chance for Kerry, the work by Colin Walsh, he drew in the three defenders, leaving the space open for Gearn, who held um, he, he held his, his place and unfortunately just couldn't get his shot away. But what a frantic start to this game. Dublin Clark's turn to attack now once more as they played the ball in towards the corner forward, who has made some space inside there. Kieran McLaughlin, the angle looked to be fairly acute. Oh, that's an ambitious effort. That's brilliant. That's over the bar. And that is sub score well it's in to win stuff here and I can tell you something that score exactly what Dublin Clark need us oh, if, if there, you know, it's free entry in today but you'd pay anything to see pay, uh, play like that this game has everything in it so far what a score from out near the sideline from Kier Kieran McLaughlin Clarkin sets another attack in motion here as the time of the uh, kingdom men to come forward here once again Nathan Gurren again has started really well at number 12 so too here is the full forward Colin Walsh who always seems to have a moment or two on the ball and look at that for a lovely delivery inside can they finish this one off with a score it's been sent in there by Nathan Gurren who was the man at the end of the move heavily involved in that move too was Sean Brosnan but the Dublin Clark defence survive and James James Herbert gets his clearance in a long relieving clearance lands 45 meters out from the opposing goal full forward is a handful that's Matthew Lynham one magnificent goal to his credit so far that one's dropped out to the right of post and it goes wide still remains 1-1 to 3 7 minutes and 45 seconds played emphatic and electrifying the start here I tell you it's just end to end stuff two goal chances there for Kerry from Sean Brosnan originally and then Nathan Gearn but a brilliant brilliant double stop by the Dublin Clark goalkeeper Ben Rogers. Well, this is a tournament that I had the pleasure of working with Pundit Arena on last year and I can tell you something the, the quality here and the intensity here in this final has certainly rivaled any of those games that we've uh, had the opportunity to see over the last uh, number of years right now a sideline ball over on the far side and an opportunity here once more for the Kerry uh, team to kick the, or to hit this one in it's going to be their midfielder Dylan Moriarty stand side of the field slightly in the shade here of O'Connor Park as he attempts to send this one over the bar that's a beautiful strike the umpires pick up a good position to see it and they signal that it has gone all the way in and all the way over the bar parity restored again 1-1 to 4 
Yeah, and in a game of this intensity and in the heat out there, we're going to have to see the, the bench being used well throughout this game. As we said in the first game, unlimited subs, and we saw Leitrim and Longford both taking advantage of that. Yeah, they use uh, how players are being deployed here today and what the management team, if they can get the, every ounce out of the key playmakers, that's going to be absolutely key on a day like this, but there's no doubt about it, the conditions getting warmer all the time as we speak. Sean Brosnan, by the way, was introduced for Conor O'Sullivan at the very start of the game. Dublin Clark started as selected on the team graphics but uh, an opportunity once more here now from the men from Kerry to go on the attack Michael Kelleher or uh, rather it's the number five was going to hit that one Dara Nolan but quickly Dublin Clark are able to win possession back and counter attack here themselves quickly their foe is looking to make some space inside always available is Jack Murray whistle sounds from the referee and that's going to be another free in for Dublin Clark and the referee has got the notebook out as well I don't think it'll be a yellow card probably a caution coming up here for the uh, Kerry number five Dara Nolan who has been spoken to there by the match official and all eyes here are going to be on Ger Ryan. Very stylish, very skillful hurler. Now, can he put this one over? This will be interesting to see if he can dispatch this one between the posts. Team's level here at this stage. In comes the free. Umpires have a good look at it and they signal that it's gone over the bar and every opportunity that comes here from a free today will be at a premium. Defences be warned. Yeah, absolutely. Just a hint of a high tackle there from Kerry, which gave away the free. And both both free takers are looking on form today, so it's definitely something both teams are going to have to be aware of. Primary possession back with the men from the capital once again here as they, uh, at this stage, are leading by a single point here in a final that has just witnessed the open opening 10 minutes fly by. One goal and two to four points at the moment. Right now, Kerry looking to counteract, looking to do something about it immediately. The ball has come down onto this near side of the field to Nathan Gurren. What a start he's made to proceedings here and that's gone in and that's gone over the bar and once again they're level 1-2 to 5 points Nathan Guerin great scorer yeah, the link-up play between himself and Colin Walsh, the full forward, is just fantastic to watch. Walsh originally won that ball, looked up, saw Gear and had made the space for himself again, and with just a simple pass and a point, brilliant, brilliant play from the two of them. Well, it's really in-tin stuff. I know it's an old cliche that's been used to describe games, but this particular match fits right into this category. You can't take your eyes off it for the moment. It's Kerry who attack on one side, it's Dublin then who go and attack at the other. And I know it's early days yet, but it's got the real hallmarks of an old-fashioned shootout. Oh, it's an absolute thrill so far you know these are two really proud counties as we spoke about and you know with with silverware on the line they're both throwing everything on this game and hopefully with the standard can just get maintained throughout the 60 minutes they've gone hammer and tongs at it in the opening exchanges Ger Ryan once again is the man who's going to hit this free from just inside the 45 meter line Ger Ryan is a hugely accurate player and it epitomises it again as that one goes in and over the bar and Kerry war level for a moment or two but Dublin have hit the front again it's 1-3 to 5 points now at this stage one separating them yeah Kerry are going to have to mind their discipline now because Ger Ryan really is on form so and it's just it's those little things that are keeping Dublin ahead just slightly in this game so Kerry are really going to have to be aware of that it's the little things that make a difference ball breaks down at the centre of the field once again Kerry looking to go in there and win some possession Colin Walsh has come deep from that full forward position but there's a little bit of uh, dominance maybe been enjoyed by Dublin Clark over the last couple of minutes or so in the middle of the field but Kerry very very quickly turning defence with into attack with Aidan Shanahan long ball played in there towards the forward line that have the potential to cause problems uh, with the likes of Nathan Guerin that we've seen so far in the game as it managed to come across there to Michael Kelleher the whistle had sounded before he picked up the pass and he's going to have to slot it back over there towards Dylan Moriarty who has hit one from a much more difficult angle and a difficult distance you could argue so far in the game and he'll maybe be hoping to slot this one over interesting to see the direction of the wind as well somewhat seems to be blowing diagonally almost at his back from the stand side in there to the goal that he's about to shoot into at the moment his team trail here by one Moriarty good striker of the ball and this time it's gone out to the right and it's gone out wide the lead still remains a solitary point yeah unfortunate there for for Moriarty he's been he's been really solid on with the place ball so far but great work again from Gearn to win that free initially he's a player that Dublin are really going to have to try and suppress Ben Rogers' puck out has been retained by Dublin and they're going to try and make some inroads here again the broad play to it in 21 metres out from the uh, goal difficult one for the Kerry goalkeeper Dara Quinlan there to deal with but he dealt with it fairly well in the end it was just bouncing as it was coming into him 
He'd have preferred maybe to have taken a chest tie, but he did well and manages to swing around and get a clearance over there towards the far side, but immediately picked up by Ryan O'Neill once again, who transfers the ball back inside of the shot, eventually comes in from distance, and that sails in and sails over the bar. And I suppose the clearance was hit out towards the sideline. Dublin did well to recycle it and take their score. Yeah, we're seeing an exhibition of scores here today. You know, uh, Kielty probably ch- took the Rana option uh, originally. To, to He probably should have stuck the ball over the bar. But uh, Rory and Neil making up for that. Their brilliant score. So one goal and three points to uh, five points here. The scoreline in Board Namona O'Connor Park in Tullamore in this particular game. That's been hugely enjoyable so far as the ball is played down again here. And opportunities for Dublin Clark. Again, they managed to work it inside here to Ger Ryan. Ger Ryan with the half opportunity of a score. And that's all he needs because if you present this guy with them, he will take them all day long. And Ger Ryan has slotted it over the bar. 1-4 for Dublin Clark. Five points for Kerry. Two between them. Yeah, we've seen him so accurate from place balls, but just look at his play from op- uh, from open play there. To, to, to twist away from his marker, to make the space to take the shot. Brilliant score from Ger Ryan. Puck out somewhat uncontested there, but they decided to bat it down, and that favours Kerry because Ronan Walsh has picked up the break. Ronan Walsh on the run, decides to shoot first time. Just not the accuracy there. It's a difficult skill to execute at the best of times, and Ronan Clark's effort just drops wide. But look at the speed and Ben Rogers' puck out. He's not hanging around. Every chance he gets to restart the game, it's obviously a tactic that they've worked on. He's doing so, but Dylan Moriarty has won possession again for the King them in that midfield sector however they only retain it for seconds because it's back again with the Dublin Clark team racing out there to try and win it is Kieran McLaughlin McLaughlin under some pressure falls his man in the end and that looks as if it's going to be a free there for Kerry they trail by two one four to five here in a game that has uh, produced a huge uh, high level of hurling a huge skill rate in the early exchanges and the water bottle's been brought on and I suppose it's an opportunity for the for the two sets of management teams here to try and uh, make sure the players are well hydrated and interested as you mentioned already the use of players from the bench here potential match winners on both substitutes bench and how they are going to be used that's going to be a telling factor on who's going to win this one it is yeah and Kerry just needs to settle down in this game again because Dublin Clark are just they're getting on top in, in, in that uh, in their own half back line there at the moment winning possession and working it down so it's important for Kerry that they just stay calm in this game get the likes of Walsh and Gearan on the ball and uh, just keep going through the motions and, and put the ball over the bar when they get the opportunities. They've had a couple of bad wides now and they just need to settle themselves back down in this game. Luke Milligan Lynch has picked up a yellow card in that last incident as well, so he's going to have to be fairly careful as the game progresses. Once again, it's going to be Moriarty over on the far side, Dylan Moriarty. The green helmet, the familiar stance from the free. Again, ever so slightly under the... Shade of the main stand here at Board Namona O'Connor Park and he drops this one in. Is the accuracy there? No. Unfortunately, from a carry perspective, that's gone wide. But I suppose from Luke Milligan Lynch in a game of uh, this particular nature and this intensity, he has to be careful from here on in after picking up a yellow card so early. Just look at the speed of play that um and Colin Walsh are so right the speed of pay from Colin Walsh once again there for all to see but unfortunately it goes right and wide yeah I think it was a little bit of a hook that time from the Clark def- or the Clark forward who worked back trekked uh, Walsh back but it, Walsh is, has been incredible so far uh, moving back to win possession and then just the speed of uh, his runs is really impressive Dublin have managed to secure some secondary possession Evan McSherry wearing number three but he's gone out around the middle of the field now at the moment as he looks to try and play that ball in there towards uh, Kieran McLaughlin close to the sideline out over the sideline it goes and it's going to be a sideline ball there once again for the Kingdom lots of uh, movement down at the respective benches at this stage as they look to almost like a game of chess to see who can maybe steal a yard here as Billy Daly prepares to take this sideline cut Daly surveying the options that are in front of him we're 17 and a half minutes in here to the opening half one goal and four to five. Very, very little separating the team. Somewhat of a loose enough clearance got into the midfield sector there and won back by Jermot Clerken here. Clerken very close to the sideline, ran out of, I suppose, yardage in the end. And that's going to be a sideline puck once more that Colin Walsh has come across to this near side to take. Yeah, huge pressure being put on the Dublin Clark player there by Sean Brosnan. And um, they're really working hard. No one's getting second on the ball, as we said. 
So taken once again and Kerry deciding to go short with this one. Again, it's going to be played up along this near side. But look at that for a catch from James Herbert. Turns and sends a huge relieving clearance down towards that midfield area. Nobody there to gather. However, Aidan Behan is there to pick it up once again for the Kingdom side. Switches it over there to the far side where he's got his uh, midfielder who has been hugely impressive. And Dylan Moriarty again tries to get uh, another attack going there. But again, it's very, very close to the sideline. It's interesting, the tactics of the two teams here. They're trying to use every width of space at O'Connor Park. Yeah, they're just suffocating each other at the moment. Huge pressure being put on, huge physicality in this game, and it's brilliant to see the real dogfight for possession here. Liam Kiernan has launched another one forward. You're so right. I think that's why players are tending to drift into wide positions. There's absolutely not a, a blade of grass available in the middle of the field. So as a result, teams are forced to go wide. They're looking for opportunities, looking maybe to carve out half chances for themselves. And speaking of which, now there's going to be one of those maybe coming the way now of the Dublin Clark team as Kerry move players back towards their goal line expecting this one to inevitably drop either over the bar or definitely fairly close to in round the house the player who was going to take it is Jer Ryan over on the far side of the field yeah, Ryan, Ryan has been hugely impressive so far. Uh, this one right from midfield, so you would imagine it would drop down and players are looking alert in there. In it goes from Joe Ryan. I don't think it's going to have the accuracy. Can they keep it in play and maybe try and recycle it? That seems to be the intended intention. Ball breaks out there, looking to try and capitalise as Matthew Lynham started the game off with an emphatic goal. Comes back out to Ryan, who had uh, got up there and joined the attack after the resulting ball was poked in, and now that's tapped in and tapped over the bar, and Dublin Clark have got another score. In fact, it was the number 10 there, Jack Keelty, who finished that one in and over the bar, and uh, Dublin now go to one goal and five to Kerry's five points. Yeah, their, their half forward line is just moving out towards the wings just to, to get a bit of breathing space and it's working well for them because the congested middle, uh, they're leaving that alone and, and the ball has been worked out. Jill McClurkin to Sam Stewart. Stewart now again is going to play it first time in there. No questions been asked here by the Dublin attack. Maybe the sense that uh, could be their best route to success. Breaks back out to Keelty. One just a moment ago. He's looking to get two in a row. He's got two in a row. Well, he was a player that you watched last week and we've watched the promo and the trailer from the commentary from yourself from Brendan he's a player that really caught the eye and he's uh, repeating the dose here again today yeah what a score from out near the sideline huge shoot skill to get himself out there to get the space it's just fantastic one goal and six to five points now and all of a sudden Dublin Clark have stole a little bit of a march here they lead by four at this stage and we're ten minutes away from half time questions been asked from the Munster side now at this stage as Dublin Clark look to try and uh, well build on the promising position but they've got some defending to do long ball in over the top beats backs and forwards alike and just sometimes that final ball going in from the uh, Kerry defence to the attacking formation inside not really the most advantageous for forwards yeah they're working so hard in that middle third to win possession but their forwards just unable to win ball in there and it just shows the, the pressure of the Dublin full back line now here come Dublin Clark once again it's been a, a game where the counter attack has been so so important for their chances so far and they've won another free that was a good penetrating run inside and they've managed to win the free well it's just I suppose a matter of mixing it up a little bit Ger Ryan is going to be the player to take it but what about the run inside that led to the free for once there was alarm bells ringing at the defence and now Ger Ryan has the simplest of tasks it seems uh, to tap this one over the bar he'll surely go for a point I don't think he'd even consider a goal no body language was there all along that he was tapping this one over and that's exactly what he's managed to achieve and it's now one goal and seven for Dublin Clark and it's five points for Kerry so Dublin Clark getting another point and they move to 1-7 on the scoreboard at the moment yeah I think it was a case there of, of using the foul in order not to give away the goal such as the searing run of, of Ryan but uh, Kerry are really going to have to get their discipline under under wraps. 22 minutes played here in the opening half. Double scores at the moment. 10 to 5. A little bit of daylight separating the teams now at this stage as Dublin come on the attack once again. Kieran McLaughlin was the man to try and make some headway. But as we've mentioned here in the commentary a few times, place or space absolutely at a premium there. And it's going to be a sideline ball once again that Billy Daly is going to take. Yeah, you can just see the pressure every time that Kerry win possession in their own full back line. There's a Dublin forward on them immediately. The physicality of the forward line is so impressive and they are turning over a huge amount of ball in there. Billy Daly did well to find Ronald Walsh. Ronald Walsh in turn is going to try and get something motoring there to the forward line. The Kerry were hoping maybe that there could be some advantage played and you can see the frustration in Michael Kelleher. He would have maybe rather that the referee allow play to continue there but the whistle had sounded from the match official and it is going to be a free in in any case 
and inevitably the midfielder Dylan Murray Arty is the uh, player who is going to go across there to take it. The man from Ballyduff, the uh, midfielder who's got the free take and responsibility here for the Munster side this afternoon. And I suppose speaking of Kerry and speaking of Offaly, that's a famous win for Kerry recently that uh, consigned, unfortunately from an Offaly perspective at senior level, consigned them to relegation for the second year running at senior hurling level. But the free coming in here from Burry Arty, he'll be looking to try and make sure that he gets this one in and between the posts to keep his team in touch. Burry Arty, good striker of the ball. But unfortunately on this occasion, the accuracy again just deserts him. Yeah, that's three in a row he's, he's uh, missed over there from nearly the exact same point. So Kerry really living off freeze at the moment. Living off freeze at the moment indeed. And uh, certainly it's making interesting viewing here for them. But Dublin definitely in the commanding position. And they're going to try and add on some more scores now before the interval. That's broken kindly for Ryan O'Neill. He's a centre half forward. Comes back out to Jack Keelty. Two already from his credit. And it gives to Jerry Ryan again. And Jerry Ryan trying to get the shot away and succeeds in getting it in. And succeeds in putting it over the bar. It's one goal and eight to five points. Ryan, the benefactor on that occasion. What, what a great uh, example of link up play from the half forward line from, from O'Neill to Keelty and, and then just allowing Ger Ryan to slip in past them into the space and just easily knock it over the bar. Brilliant play. More possession won back there once again by Brian Kill. So it's a, a, another one going forward once more here uh, for the Dublin side. They get that ball played in dangerously and over the top. And uh, it's a speculative effort that's dropping in from distance and dropping in and dropping in and dropping over the bar. Their tails are up at the moment now. Yeah, you could just see JP Carroll very frustrated there with his clearance effort. Just went straight to Ger Ryan, who was in acres of space for, for probably the first time in this game and just easily slipped it over the bar. Well, you cannot give a player like that any type of space in this game at all. One goal and nine to five the lead. Let's see what the, what the fight is like now in Kerry. They are not going to give up by any manner of means. Aidan Shanahan was the midfielder who won that possession. Eventually, they walk it over there towards the far side of the field. And that's better. And that's dispatched in and over the bar by Ronan Walsh. Yeah, really play, clever play there from Aidan Shanahan, just to little dink ahead uh, to, to Walsh and um, over the bar, and it's the score Kerry badly needed. It was a good team move that led to that score, as you quite rightly said, as one they needed. It brings them up now to, I think, six points on the scoreboard, so Kerry moving up another one digit there, so one goal and nine to six at this stage. Kerry just finding themselves at two uh, scores behind, if you wanted to call it that way, two goals to bring them right back into it. Their confidence up now. Nathan Guerin again making headway on the 21 bit of line dangerous ball drop again and it goes in and over the bar two in a row for the kingdom fantastic score there from Nathan Gear and just the run before it um, you know we mentioned him throughout the first half and he kind of died away in the last 10 minutes but what a score to bring him back into this game it's just an indicator that Kerry haven't gone away and you never have a Kerry team beaten in any final that's what the old saying says and it's uh, very much coming into play here now at the moment one goal and nine is 12 seven for Kerry just five separating the teams it's nothing in a hurling game especially one of this close and this intensity but now it's the opportunity of Dublin to attack once more and coming forward is Jack Keelty this one drops short well taken by the Kerry goalkeeper Derek Quinlan second time in the game he's had to deal with a potentially difficult situation the clearance goes out over the sideline and it's another sideline ball for Dublin Clark the dominance of this half forward line is so impressive you know they're drifting into space their movement is fantastic it, they're really pulling this Kerry defence apart uh, a great run there from Keelty probably took the wrong option when there was uh, other people available but it might work out from the edge Ger Ryan lovely connection on that one drops it in again towards the mix into the danger zone it goes chasing after it here is Matthew Lynham the full forward one goal already he's looking for another one Matthew Lynham sends it in and dispatches it brilliantly to the back of the net second goal of the game for him second goal for Dublin Clark they lead 2-9 to 7 points Matthew Lynham what a man around the edge of the square we're talking about the creativity of the half forward line but what a finish from, from their full forward uh, great great connection from Joe Ryan on the sideline first to set up the score and then a beautiful beautiful finish well, just look at the replay of it it was a fantastic score there from Matthew Lynham talk about a bear in the square that's exactly what he was right place right time right finish but look at Kerry coming back here now they've been stung by the concession of that score they need a goal of their own ball half block down inside and uh, quite a lot of defending here for Dublin Clark to do if they can Kerry still looking to recycle it inside could go anywhere little bit untidy at the moment Shanahan there under the breaking ball so too was Colin Walsh but again the Dublin Clark defence are able to survive there 
player and Keen Hassett gets it away and they manage to get their clearance only out as far as this near side of the field it comes Parik O'Sullivan O'Sullivan unable to keep the move alive for Kerry and now they've got to get into a defensive formation as Dublin come forward with Jar Ryan look at Ryan moving he's got a player free outside the ball just couldn't get the pass away to Jack Murray and once again it's Kerry who were able to come away with that that's surely a high tackle there on the Kerry full back Dara Slattery as he was coming forward and Dara Slattery has won himself a free and there's retrospective action to follow from the referee but the place is still buzzing after Matthew Lydon's second goal and a possible goal chance of uh, uh, for Kerry over at the other end in a yellow card shown to the Dublin full forward yeah that could end up to be a really critical uh, phase of play there uh, Kerry needed that score to get them back into it after the goal and unfortunately for them uh, Dublin David Graham just coming out with the ball for, for Dublin Meanwhile over at the other side now it's an opportunity for Dylan Moriarty and Dylan Moriarty sends in the shot but sends it wide and it remains two goals and nine to seven points yeah, another bad wide for Moriarty there. He'll be disappointed with that. He's having a, a lot of problems over the far side there with his shooting. So it might be a, an opportunity to, to maybe switch wings. Ronan Walsh drops this one short into the grateful arms of Ben Rogers, the goalkeeper for Dublin Clark at this stage. Well, he's uh, kept a clean sheet so far. Two goals at the other end has really helped to ignite proceedings here in this particular game as once more Dublin Clark trying to get a stranglehold of possession around the middle of the field. We're almost into injury time at the end of the opening period. That ball has been overcarried. It's going to be a free in for the Dublin side and it's an opportunity for them now to maybe finish off this first half with a with a plum here right now their free is going to come in from Jer Ryan Ryan again who has been a constant threat from free and indeed from open play right throughout the batch we've seen some wonderful exhibition of long range free takings here so far in the two games thus far that we've covered Ryan again strikes this one in, huge, huge connection, that's dropping in and dropping over the bar and something that Joe Ryan has got in his locker is the ability to hit long range frees. What a score from Joe Ryan, um, he's been so impressive in this, in this half, uh, both from open play and from place balls and that just shows that Kerry can't give him opportunities like that. Oh you cannot give him an opportunity, he just destroy you and here they come once more now, Kerry themselves, they know they need scores up somewhere, Colin Walsh has dropped this one in around the top, Nathan Gearn is in the back and that's better from Kerry well they needed something before half time and Nathan Guerin is the man who gets the goal for them, what a finish once he got in round the back of the cover here's the replay coming up, watch for Guerin make the run, he gets inside the Dublin cover for once, the angle was acute but look at that for a finish brilliantly executed, wonderful goal, game on yeah we talked about the link up play between Walsh and Guerin before and there it's just at its finest there, Walsh to Guerin Gearin just shortens the grip and taps it over the head of Ben Rogers. Fantastic goal. Oh, from a neutral perspective, it's just what the game needed. It's really brought it to life here now as we approach half time and the referee signals that that ball has gone out wide. And another opportunity, he blows the half time whistle. Well, what an end we've had to the opening half. We've had three high quality goals here in the first period of play as well. I can tell you something those who have come here early today haven't been disappointed so far. Three cracking goals there, two of them coming to the Dublin full forward Matthew Lynham in the opening half and then Nathan Guerin getting that goal for Kerry has very much put the cat among the pigeons. Oh this game has everything so far, the pace, the physicality the intensity, these players are just giving everything at the moment Dublin um, go, going toe to toe with Kerry at the start got themselves into that early lead but Kerry coming back, an absolutely brilliant goal from Nathan Guerin then to bring them right back into this game yeah, they're right back into it. There's the situation at half time. Dublin Clark, two goals and seven points. Kerry, two goals and ten for Dublin Clark, one goal and seven for Kerry. Still very little between the teams here. That goal on the stroke of half time has given Kerry significant room for optimism. It's all to play for in the second half. Dublin Clark lead at the interval, 2 10 to 1 7. The good news is we've got the second half to come.
Well, welcome back to O'Connor Park in Tullamore. Second half will be getting underway here very, very shortly in our second final this afternoon. Kerry against Dublin Clark. What a game that we've had here so far. This goal really ignited uh, proceedings just before half time. That was the Kerry goal. We'll look at that in a moment. But here's the goal that uh, one, one of the two goals scored by the Dublin full forward, Matthew Lynham. Some finish there. Yeah, first of all, great setup by, by Ger Ryan. Just picked him out. Uh, and uh, the support play from Dublin has been fantastic so far. They always have a man running off the shoulder. And and, uh, and Matthew Lynham there was the man to, to, to benefit from that. Well, here's the second goal. A brilliant sideline ball that set this one up again. That direct ball coming into the forward line. Lynham again getting in behind the carry cover. And just watch this now. Goalkeeper, absolutely no chance. Finished it magnificently into the roof of the net. And at that stage, Dublin were cruising. Yeah, absolutely. And, and go great play by Brian Keown, the referee there, to allow advantage um, for, for Matthew Lynham to, to play on there because he was being well marshaled by Darius Slattery. And what a finish, just cool and calm to the back of the corner. A great, great goal. Well, we alluded to it in the commentary that we probably needed something from Kerry to get them back into contention, and then this happened. Look at the build-up play here once again. Great play from the full forward, Colin Walsh, and setting it up. And Gearan, he broke in round the cover, got inside the covering player who was Keen Hassett, and look at that for a dink finish into the roof of the net. Other players might have blasted that, but he just was coolness personified. Yeah, as we said earlier on, the link-up play between these two players has been fantastic. Walsh there to spot the run of, of, um, of Gearan, brilliant, brilliant play, and then just rounds the, his defender little short uh, shortens the hurl and then straight into the net brilliant goal I know it's an old cliche but there was an old head on young shoulders there when he put that one away other players would have panicked there on so many occasions but not young Gear and he took it ever so well and as a result we have got a real game on our hands here now for the second half two goals and ten to one goal and seven the Dublin midfielders back out of their positions at the moment the Kerry team breaking away from the huddle over to our left now I know we said it about the opening game as well but the uh, opening score in the second half here the opening couple of scores going to be absolute crucial a couple of carry points and this one is really in the mix yeah absolutely you talked about the the old head on young shoulders there the maturity from these players is fantastic such a clever play from both teams you know you'd, you'd nearly swear you're watching a senior game instead of under 17 the skill level has been absolutely immense here the two midfielders going in Aidan Shanahan once again and Ronan Walsh who has been a key figure for Kerry is going to start at midfield again there'll be so much emphasis on the restart it's a traditional eight and nine that's in there for Dublin Clark at the moment and Liam Kiernan and Sam Stewart who have both worked very very hard in the opening 35 minutes or that we've seen 30 minutes plus the five of injury time that we've witnessed here in the opening half as we mentioned very much in the balance nicely poised two goals and ten to one goal and seven it's Dublin Clark in the ascendancy as we're waiting to get the second half underway who's going to be our second winners of the day the second team to lift some silverware here in in Bordnamona, O'Connor Park in Tullamore on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Referee has checked. Everything is ready to go for the second half. Little bit of jostling uh, for positions just before the throw-in and the intensity in the opening few minutes of the first half was absolutely intense to say the least. So we could have something similar to the start of the second period of play. Dublin Clark looking for an explosive start. They're looking for the opening score of the game and it's been provided and provided excellently as well by Jack Keelty. Well, he lit up the opening half with two brilliant points at one stage he started the second half here with a brilliant score as well yeah we talked about their half forward line in the first half the influence that they're having there on this game is immense and a brilliant well worked point there from Jack Hilty 2-11 to 1 goal and 10 it's so much uh, I suppose individual players who are lighting up this particular game with such wonderful skill at different times and the ball won back here by Aidan Shanahan for Kerry for so many spells in the opening half it was score for score and now the kingdom attack looking to get something motoring with Michael Kelleher early on but Dublin's defence has been immense they've stood very firm to the task as that ball is blocked there out over the sideline it goes the half block getting on it and it's going to be a sideline ball as they look to try and retrieve it quickly here for uh, the Dublin Clark team already one score to their credit from Jack Keelty in the second period of play and once again the man who is going to strike this one for them is uh, their number 12 deep there Ger Ryan gets it to the centre half back here's Ger McClurkin great man to read the game he pucks this one long down towards the forward line but it's batted clear there by the Kingdom cover Dara Nolan trying to bring forward the play but he's immediately grounded and the referee is going to award a free there 
Nolan taking it quickly, not hanging around to ask any questions. Down towards the full forward division it goes, but it's going to be picked up by Sam Stewart. If anything, he's been the more defensive of the two Dublin midfielders that we've seen in this game so far, but his contribution has been huge. Possession won back by Dara Nolan once more. Nolan finding it somewhat difficult to get the ball up on the stick. Has it at the second time of asking. Player free outside him here is Ronan Walsh, who had such a huge contribution to the make in setting up that Kerry goal. That's a clear push in the back going in there. Somewhat of a lazy tackle. You could describe it maybe coming in from Brian Keogh, and that's going to be a free in for Kerry and an opportunity for them to get their opening score in the second half. Yeah, Kerry really working hard to win possession. You saw them losing the ball in the previous uh, phase of play, but two brilliant hooks from Dylan Moriarty and Ronan Walsh to, to gain back possession. They're really working hard. They want to fight their way back into this game. Dylan Moriarty, the man who's going to take this one, as always, the camera shot from behind the goal just sums up the size of the task that he is facing at this stage, looking for Kerry's opening score of the second period. That's taken well, that's dispatched in and over the bar. Well, he can take them, I suppose, from the left or the right. He's a hugely skillful player, and he's uh, keeping that scoreboard taken over from a Kerry perspective. Yeah, hugely important score for Kerry and for Moriarty. He missed a few at the end of the first half, so that'll give him great confidence again. Kerry deciding to attack Dublin Clark down along the flanks at the start of the second period of play here, as a result of that, uh, the Dublin corner back there, Luke Mulligan Lynch, who's picked up a yellow card in the match so far, along with Matthew Lynham, two yellow cards, both going to the uh, Dublin team in the opening period of play, but they have won themselves a free on this particular occasion. Interesting to see the ploy that uh, Kerry are using the wings a little bit more here for the second half. Dublin may be the dominant team down through the middle. Yeah, we saw how narrow the play was in the open half and not a second to use possession, so they're really doing what Dublin did in the first half and working it out to the wings and uh, they're, it's working for them so far. Good corner back play by J.P. O'Carroll, cutting out that particular attack at source and coming forward here now is Aidan Shanahan once again and Shanahan brings this one down into a, a dangerous position once more it's done well to avoid the sweeper there and now there's suddenly opportunities here for Michael Kelleher and Kelleher has led the defence of Murray Dance, he's in on goal, oh brilliant Michael Kelleher what a goal, well the second goal of the game has gone to carry, it's two goals and eight to two goals and eleven and Michael Kelleher, that was brilliant play you won't see a better goal in the game What to work the ball from full back uh, the Jamie Herbert worked, or, or sorry, JP Carroll, I should say, uh, to work that ball up. Number nine, Aidan Shanahan, has been so prominent in the second half. Uh, absolute brilliant team goal from Kerry. Absolute brilliant goal indeed, and it's put this one right up for grabs now. But all of a sudden, there's an opportunity here for Dublin to hit back immediately. Colin Walsh getting a shot in, and that's gone wide. Well, the two, the concession of the two goals, one either side of the interval, has to have really shook Dublin here in this game. Just look at this for a piece of skill again. Look at the sidestep, taking him clear of the cover, and just wait for this finish. Bang into the back of the net. Game on. Two eleven to two goals and eight. I can tell you something. We have some game down for this decision here at this stage and the good news is there's only 34 minutes and 40 seconds played it's anybody's match here in this particular final ball breaks free once again but easily picked up there by Billy Daly he's read the situation well here has uh, Billy Daly but the clearance is somewhat loose it's gone back to the Sam Stewart Sam Stewart knows that his team need a score he's dropped this one in dangerously has come back off the upright backs and forwards have to be alert there and Kerry have given the ball away and it's back once again with Joe Ryan Joe Ryan has got a player free outside it's the full forward again and the ball is finished to the back of the net it's goal number three for Matthew Lynham a goal at one end for Kerry a goal at the other end for Dublin and he's completed the hat-trick you can't take your eyes off this game for a minute what a play first of all uh, JP Carroll would be a bit annoyed that he, he, he sent the ball straight to Ger Ryan but what a pass into Lynham what a finish again we've seen some top quality goals in this game it's an absolute pleasure to watch oh Matthew Lynham well you could argue that Kerry were the chief orchestrators in the own downfall there but they're looking to do something about it almost immediately and that one's pucked in and pucked over the bar Nathan Guerin come of the hour come of the man they needed a score back three goals and 11 to two goals and nine but the influence of Matthew Lynham three goals in the game so far and his finishing has been of a very very high order absolutely he's been a pleasure to watch and a crucial score there for Kerry uh, it's something that they didn't manage to do in the first half was respond after the goals and they managed it there they've some they've shown serious fight in the second half well, just and 
Let's we have a game on our hands. At the replay, that's what we're talking about. The overturn in possession where Kerry give the ball away. The build-up play from Ryan was brilliant. He had the vision to pick out the full forward, line him outside him, and look at that finish. No stopping of it, right into the back of the net. And after conceding two goals, while well, Dublin Clark needed one themselves just to st- settle them down ever so slightly, and they've managed to do that. Three goals and 11 to two goals and nine. What a match we've got in play here now as a long-range effort drops in, but the goalkeeper is there to deal with it. Deals with it convincingly. Gets his clearance away over towards this near side, but again, it's going to be picked up by Jack Keelty. He is a man who always has time. Look at this for a little bit of skill. Not afraid to take on his marker and take him on again. Goes inside, goes outside, gets the shot in. Unfortunately, not the finish, but you know something, I'd pay the admission fee alone to see the confidence of this guy. He can take on players. He creates the opening, sells a dummy or two. That's brilliant, Harlan. That yeah, is brilliant. A, a real shame that he couldn't um, finish that one because he sold the dummy twice. Absolutely fantastic. Well, it's a, a game that has really come to life and exploded in the second half. And Dublin Clark on the attack once again. Their forward line creating a little bit of space inside a, a tug of the jersey there. And uh, Jack Murray's he was attempting to get away from the Kerry rear guard and the Kerry cover. Well spotted by the match officials. And I suppose in fairness to the referee and his team of officials here, they've let this game ebb and flow as well. And they've played a huge part in, well, the, the, the fanfare and the viewing that we have here that we can describe as compelling. Yeah, it's, it's such a high-intensity game. You know, they're struggling to keep up with the pace of it as well and um, so brilliant uh, by the referee just to let it flow that little bit more and we're seeing some great great skill and scores as a result all eyes now on Ger Ryan he's going to strike this one from outside the 45 meter line again it's the opportunity as the respective management teams are holding meetings down under our commentary position at the moment just wondering what they can do to alter things here and the, again all eyes on the free taker and he struck that one ever so well and he struck it over the bar Ger Ryan and that keeps the scoreboard ticking over nicely here from a Dublin perspective and they've got another one three goals and 12 to two goals and nine they've built up a little bit of a cushion and some daylight between the teams again yeah but you can't rule out Kerry for a second it's such a high physicality game and you know they're really really fighting to get back into it again uh, any more goals in this game are going to be absolutely crucial but at the moment there's no doubt about it Dublin Clark have uh, certainly got their tails up again and Owen Behan once more tries to get something motoring there stop that source from a Kerry uh, perspective and indeed the uh, free is going to go the way of the men in green and gold obviously somewhat shaken by the concession of that third goal Dara Nolan once again will take the free from his own 45 bitter line he's got plenty of distance in that one as it drops it over the heads of backs and forwards might break here for Liam Palmer Liam Palmer lovely piece of skill has taken him onto the 14 meter line still Liam Palmer oh he's grounded unceremoniously as he was going through and that's going to be a free well he had the wizardry and the magic to weave his way through the Dublin Clark defence and eventually Dublin Clark decided enough of that it's time to stop uh, this particular run and they're happy to concede the free I tell you what the crowd here in Tullamore have been treated to an absolute feast of hurling the skill from one end of the field to the other is absolutely fantastic and you know well well worked there and another chance here for Kerry now to get themselves back into this James Herbert is the player who has picked up the knock there over on the far side the Dublin uh, defender as they were trying to prevent that but what about the run of the Kerry player that led to that particular free it was real poetry and motion to see the way that he had the confidence to run at the rear guard, drew in the tackle and was able to get the free and I think the Dublin defence were well able to, to deal with it. Yeah, it's something we've seen from Kerry. Okay, well just to look at the first one, here's the, the ball dropping in, that dangerous one from a goal and it came back off the upright and everybody seemed to lose the flight of it. Now Kerry had possession, eventually secured and that was the giveaway, that was the, the overturn of possession there that the Kerry corner back, I'm sure, J.P. Carroll will be absolutely frustrated about. Meanwhile, at the other end, a free for Kerry that has been tapped in and tapped over the bar. Once again, it's uh, Dylan Moriarty, the man who's quite content to put that one in and put it over the bar. So another score for Kerry, three goals and 12 to three goals and twelve to two goals and 10, the scoreline at the moment. And Kerry's turn to attack now, an attack in style. And Aidan Shanahan, they're looking for two in a row in the kingdom, and Shanahan provides it. Kingdom back up and running again. Shanahan has been so impressive in this second half. One possession there, turned it over in midfield. Lovely link up play with himself and Ronan Walsh and straight over the bar. Great from Kerry. Yeah, oh, yeah, what a match here. Three goals and 12 to two goals and 11. 40 minutes and 45 seconds have just gone by in the blink of an eye here as two hugely committed teams are giving it their all here in O'Connor Park. 
in uh, Tullamore, Bordenamone or Connor Park, the venue for these games for the Bank of Ireland Celtic Challenge Cup finals. And really, for all of us here on Pundit Arena, it's fantastic to be able to bring you some of the very best underage hurlers in the country and the, 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 the skill level here and the entertainment that they are providing. Second to none, one of the Kerry players has gone down injured. So there'll be another break here in play for a moment or two. Let's see how the Kerry player is. This is what led to it. There's the two players at the top of your screen just getting to know each other fairly well. The Dublin Clark number nine and Kerry's number five, Dara Nolan, who has gone to ground. And Dara Nolan seems to have maybe been ever so slightly pulled back there. But let's see what the referee is going to do. He's consulting with the linesman over on the far side. No doubt about it, Nolan has been one of the players that has been a a major contributor to Kerry's attacks from that half-back line throughout the game. Here's another look at it, at the score. So the replay coming up here of that particular incident that may or may not lead to some action being taken by the referee. Now he's speaking to some players over there, and there you have it. So there may have been contact made, but it's going to be the referee acting on the advice of his linesman. And he's got the notebook out. I think both players are going to be spoken to here by the match official. Darren Nolan, the carry number five, thankfully up on his feet, and he's recovered. Dublin's number nine is Sam Stewart, as we described earlier, as perhaps the more defensive of the two Dublin midfielders that started, but he seems to have uh, very much reverted back there to try and keep tabs on the carry player in question, and the referee says that it's going to be a yellow card all wrong for both players, and they obviously will have to be nearly on, I suppose, somewhat... Uh, well, tender hooks for the remainder of this game as they pick up yellow cards at this stage. Back with the action live once more. The free here is going to be sent in for Dublin by Ger Ryan. Sends it over to us this near side of the field. Players converging on it here again. Again, place uh, again any type of space out there. Absolutely at a premium as a number of players decide to converge in where the, the slitter has arrived to at this stage of the ball. Been recycled out, but the referee has spotted an infringement before it has got away. And it's a free now over on this near side and another up opportunity for Dublin Clark to keep the scoreboard taking over. Yeah, no player being given a second on the ball here. Both really fighting for possession and I would hate to be the person having to put together the highlights package for this because every second has just been a pleasure to watch in this game. Ger Ryan is going to be the man who is going to strike this free. He's, uh, well, I suppose one of the standout performers along with Matthew Lynham, who, strangely enough, has got three goals. You could argue that the Kerry defence have kept the shackles on him fairly well since then. There's another one tapped in beautifully and between the balls by the Dublin free taker, Ger Ryan, and they now move up another one on the scoring charts. Three goals and 12 uh, to two goals and 11. And really, I suppose if they're another score, another goal maybe from the Kerry team is what we need here to really ignite this one into the closing stages of this game almost 44 minutes played here ball out over the sideline and another sideline ball for Dublin Clark interesting to see that Lynham as a full forward tends to drift out of the game but then all of a sudden he comes back with an explosive goal that reminds everybody he's in there yeah he's just a typical full forward there he's always in the right place at the right time uh, in, the, in the danger zone when you need him but a great movement all around the, the Dublin forwards and it's really uh, paying dividends for them Ronan Walsh was the player who was trying to make some headway there, was immediately fouled, and Dylan Moriarty decides to take the free quickly, much to the displeasure of the referee who wasn't ready for it. He wanted to go in and consult some of the players inside there. He had spotted something taking place, and it is going to be a free here in any case, and Moriarty has a second bite of the cherry. Well, he's a few feet in from the side, and you can see it there from between the 65 and the 45 meter line. Down towards the town goal here in O'Connor Park. That familiar stance hugely accurate player he's played a massive part in Kerry's run to the final thus far and he made a proper good connection there as well ball dropping in accuracy just not there maybe slightly out of his compass range for that particular free and it goes wide and we're still looking really here at a grandstand finish yeah you can see the pace of the game the Dublin goalkeeper Ben Rogers uh, wasting no time in taking that ball back out yeah the restarts is particularly from Ben Brosnan the speed of them have been something that has very much caught our eye right throughout the course of the game so far again it's a, a little bit scrappy there as the two teams battle hammer and tongs for possession it's going to come back maybe here for Ryan O'Neill being smothered up manages to do well to recycle it out to Jack Keelty this guy has got three players round him it makes no difference and you've got the skill set of Jack Keelty because he's able to tap it in and tap it over the bar I don't maybe know if Kerry put half the team on him whether to be able to stop him this guy can score he backs himself every time and that was brilliant yeah absolutely he found the space out wide while everyone was sur surrounding O'Neill and then you know the Kerry players converged on him but quick ball shortened the grip 
and straight over the bar. Brilliant green score. The jersey was being pulled on Michael Kelleher. They're one of the goal scorers in the game thus far. But look where he has drifted out there to an advanced position, probably due in no small part to the fact that the Kerry forward line are maybe getting a little bit frustrated by the lack of possession that they're able to get there over on the far side. They have to make do with a free on this particular occasion. In any case, and the free is going to be taken for them over there, I think, by Ronan Walsh as he prepares to try and drop this one in round the house. There's Walsh. There's the distance he'll face. He'll surely maybe have a go at dropping this one in. It's a huge effort from Ronan Walsh. is going to drop in there around the edge of the square. And the ball has been touched into the back of the net. It's another goal. It was the number eight, Dylan Moriarty, who was in round the edge of the square. Now, did he get a touch in it or not? It ended up in the back of the net. It was a long-range free. It'll be interesting to see the replay of that one because Dylan Moriarty was in round the edge of the square. And I think he may well have got that one and he may well have uh, finished it to the net. Indeed, it has us three goals and 14 to three goals and 11. 3-14 to 3-11. Here come Kerry on the attack once more. Ball hitting in from distance. That's gone out to the right and it's gone wide. It just shows... Here's the replay coming up. Just watch from Moriarty inside there. He, he's the player at the edge of the square. It will, we'll watch that in just a moment but uh, just talk to me about the goal there it's one that Kerry needed it just shows that every time you think that Dublin Clark are comfortably ahead in this game Kerry come right back into it uh, we said that they've been starved of possession down there um, just a few minutes ago but when they get the ball down there the impact that they can make is phenomenal I don't know, maybe Brendan Hennessy who will be on commentary on the next game. He might have a little bit longer to wait. I think this one has got extra time written all over it at this stage here. It's such a keenly competitive game here between these two teams who have absolutely served up a thriller. Now, momentum has swung back to the men from Kerry. Ronan Walsh plays it in. And again, it's going to be a long-range effort. Dropping in, dropping, dropping in and dropping over the bar. Has it? The two umpires are taking their time to make a decision. No, it's gone wide. Oh, it was a huge effort. Had that one gone over? Over, I think we would have brought the, the roof of O'Connor Park. Yeah, Dylan Moriarty. Here's our again. replay coming up off the goal. Now just watch here for the presence of the of the full forward inside. It was a long, long range effort that was dropping in. There's Moriarty. There's the number eight. Keep an eye on him. Gets the stick. Yes, he definitely made contact to it. Moriarty one-handed contact as well. That's a brilliant camera shot to complement a brilliant goal. Brilliant goal to get the hurl over the heads of the three defenders surrounding him and just to tap it in. Brilliant score. So right now, Kerry on the attack once more. Ball played down here from uh, the Ronan Walsh. Walsh again knocking it inside. There's possibilities here for them. And they, again, Dublin Clark have some defending to do. They have been rocked themselves by the concession of the third goal, but they've come back time and time again in this game. Liam Kiernan is the midfielder. Long delivery. Gets the ball down here. Down towards the direction it goes of uh, Owen Behan, who had come up at the attack, wearing number seven, Owen Behan. And Owen Behan is fouled, and it's a free in. Well, you can see, I suppose, the nervous tension that's on the sideline there with the substitutes, with the water carriers with the management teams almost everybody looking to get involved in this particular game and right now it's going to be the free taking ability of Ger Ryan that's going to be challenged next here Ger Ryan preparing to take this free places the ball on the ground yeah, you can feel the tension around the ground as we take into the final 10 minutes. Kerry about to introduce another sub. Ger Ryan, he strikes this one ever so well. That's one that they needed just to settle them down a little bit. And Ger Ryan has provided the magic at his three goals and 14 points to three goals. Sorry, three goals and 15 points now to three goals and 11. Dublin Clark moving up to 3.15 on the scoreboard. They've got that little bit of breathing space again. Yeah, the use of the bench is going to be so critical now in these last 10 minutes. Uh, you know, it's been such a high-intensity game, especially with the heat out there, and, and players are just going to have to conserve their energy and, and just to, to last until the end here now. Yeah, it's going to be a grandstand finish, there's no doubt about it. 50 minutes played here in the, the second of our finals this afternoon on Pundit Arena from uh, the Bank of Ireland Celtic Challenge Cup finals. And really, well, this second final with the first game, the result might have been out of question. A long way out from the finish. It's anybody's guess how this is going to go. Dublin Clark seem to be stealing a march ever so often in this game, but the men from Kerry will just not die. And that's a lovely piece of fielding by Dylan Moriarty in the middle of the field. Gets it outside into Ronan Walsh, two of the key players from Kerry combined and Roland Walsh is fouled 45 metres out from goal what about the fielding that led to setting up that one I tell you 
Kerry need their leaders in these last few minutes and Dylan Moriarty is really stepping up. What a catch. We've seen some un unbelievable skill throughout this game and that's one of the best pieces you're going to see. Oh, without a doubt. And indeed, the man who's going to take the free, the one-handed finish uh, from him to the back of the net. That was absolutely brilliant. i tell you something, if, the, if that's on the Sunday game tomorrow night, they could be talking about it for an hour. It was a brilliant finish from Dylan Moriarty. He's got the free here from just inside the 45-meter line. If he gets this, we're back to a three-point ball game again and he's done exactly that 315 to 312 Dylan Moriarty game on here now in the last 10 minutes look at that for a catch it was absolute magic to watch there game on without a shadow of a doubt here at this stage it could go any way momentum just seems to have ever so slightly swung back to the team in green and gold watch the goalkeeper Ben Rogers scampers from his line takes it well no messing with the clearance gets it out straight away to his centre half forward Ryan O'Neill who's made some space for himself over on the far side O'Neill drops the delivery down again to that inside forward line racing in to try and gather it here is Ger Ryan two Dublin players converge on the carry man in possession and that's going to be a free out for the kingdom and another opportunity for them now to present themselves with a launch pad to get another attack going it's sent in there by Dara Nolan a player who picked up a yellow card just a moment or two ago Nolan drops this one in round the house once more possibilities here if Kerry can get Moriarty into possession here Moriarty has it he's got the opportunity it's just gone wide brilliant individual build up play from Moriarty just unfortunate the finish not there yeah frustrating from, for him because they need every score now and um, they're still trail by th by three um, but we know the danger their their forwards can pose it's a three-point ball game it's going to go right down to the wire of this one we've got about seven and a half minutes remaining here of normal time plus whatever injury time is going to be added on at the end of the match possession with Aidan Shanahan once again plays it outside of there to Dara Nolan a key figure who's growing more and more as an influence in the game as it progresses and that's going to be a free inside the 45 meter line and it's an opportunity here now for the Kerry lads to reduce the deficit ever so further and or ever and leave a little bit more between them but really with Moriarty you'd expect this one to go over the bar he's a guy who has led the charge for them all afternoon yeah Dublin Clark can't be giving them him those opportunities in the second half because he's going to punish you so Dylan Moriarty from just inside the 45 meter line stands now and prepares to take aim his team are three points down here in this final we're really entering into a crucial stage of the game Moriarty preparing to strike the ball again the body language is good the execution is good the finish is there and it's gone all the way in and over three goals and 15 to three goals and 13 and just two separating them here at this stage and really it's anybody's guess how this one is going to go it's anybody's guess you'd hate to see either of these teams losing it at the moment we might even see extra time out of this one. Oh, I think it's got extra time I agree with you so much I think it's got extra time written on it from a long way out but the, obviously the conditions are warm if there is going to be extra time we'll be looking at two 10 minute spells to be played at the end of the 60 minutes and the two teams have battled it out here so bravely here but scores are going to be absolutely at a premium a lapse in concentration though has presented Rory O'Neill with the opportunity to come forward here ball straight out over the sideline again and it's a sideline ball for Kerry and one that they are full back Dara Slattery is uh, preparing to take here just outside his own 45 meter line the execution of the sideline ball here is going to be interesting he'll be hoping here with his team trailing by two that he can get it up the field but again it's a poor execution on the delivery there O'Neill back to win it was on the ground still got the ball away whistle sounds again from the official and I suppose it's got a little bit scrappy but the intensity is there and the tension levels have risen significantly yeah we've talked about it throughout the game but the physicality from Rory O'Neill there do you know all the Dublin forwards well able to win their all own ball all battling all trekking back as well to win possession it's fantastic to see absolutely it's been a, a game that has uh, I suppose gripped everybody from the very get go and the referee has again some action to take. Oh, he's decided to show a red card here to the centre half forward. Rory O'Neill has been sent off. It's a straight red card. Well, he takes the helmet off and shakes his head with frustration as he makes way. But O'Neill was involved with this incident right down under us here in the commentary position. So Dublin are going to have a numerical disadvantage here for the closing stages of this game. So 3.15 to 3 goals and 13. Uh, the scoreboard reads and uh, well at this stage really it could go down to the wire here. But Dublin are down to 14. Here come Kerry. They look to reduce the deficit here. They might even get into the lead if they can finish it with a goal. Colin Walsh bear again and he's got it. Colin Walsh sends him to the back of the net. And Dublin, all of a sudden, after having a man sent off, have conceded another goal. What a game, 4-13.
to 3.15, 4.13 for Kerry, and Kerry are on the attack again, and the ball has gone in towards Moriarty again, and the ball breaks inside, and what drama here, a fourth goal for Kerry, and that really, really now has given them the ascendancy. Oh, what a game this is, this is the best that you're going to see in Hurling. The finish from Colin Walsh, we've talked about him throughout the game. Replay coming up, Colin Walsh's goal, well, what a ball coming inside, Walsh took it, Here's the set up, Moriarty setting it up. Moriarty. And look at Walsh, just look at him come through here. Gets the finish in, brilliant into the roof of the net. That is absolutely incredible. Kerry 25 points, Dublin 24. One point separating the teams here at this stage. It's absolutely amazing uh, to see the finish that we've had here to this particular encounter. What a game, what a gripping contest we've had from start to finish. 56 minutes and 23 seconds played. The puck out has been taken here. The Dublin goalkeeper has uh, had picked up maybe a little bit of an injury for himself, so the full back has taken the free out. Now, can Dublin respond? Dublin Dublin clock, they're on the attack once more, everything is going against them, Ger Ryan, they've lost the lead, they've relinquished the lead, they're a player down, and they've just hit the ball out to the right of the post and wide, just look at the tension down at the sideline, Kerry smell victory at this stage, here's the replay coming in again, that was some moment, some pivotal moment in the game, the goal taking ability here today has been absolutely out of this world. Oh, we have seen seven cracking goals in this game, we've talked about Colin Walsh throughout this game, but he's been mainly in, in a support role and in a, in a, as an assistant to, to other scores but it just shows his, his vision his capabilities to finish that goal beautifully and just a little dink from, from uh, Moriarty before that to, to pass in the ball absolutely fantastic goal. Oh it's gone right down to the wire now at this stage Ronan Walsh all the questions been asked to Dublin Clark who seem to be in the ascendancy for long spells of this game and here come Kerry and here comes Dara Slattery look at this for a movement he's all the way up onto the opposition 21 metre line he's gone to ground the referee has awarded a free in it's just what you need somebody to do at this stage in the game to take it by the scruff of the neck to run at the opposition defence to put your body on the line and to win the free yeah Dublin had no real option there but to, but to give away the free and, and that's you know that's maybe where the one man advantage is, is showing because you here's the sending off incident well this is what took place watch the reaction here as he played the ball away and the afters oh there's, uh, there's the kick well, the two players getting involved, but he clearly kicked out there at the uh, Dublin number 11, and that is what led to the dismissal, and that is why Dublin find themselves at a numerical disadvantage here at this stage. Yeah, there was a bit of a wild swing before but, that as well. Yeah. Um, but, and, but I and, think, and then I the think kick Parik at the end. Parik O'Sullivan there may well have stood on the, on the leg of the Dublin player. Meanwhile, there's a free at the other side that Moriarty has just tapped in and tapped over the bar. Well, that's a contentious issue. That's one that we can have a look at after. But what we can tell you is that Kerry have got another score on the board and it's 4-14 to 3-15. And there's two between them and it's Kerry who hold that two-point advantage. Well, there'll be controversy and plenty of talking points at the end of this game. But 58-41... There might be another sting in the tail, but Kerry are finishing with Colin Walsh in style. And Walsh has played it in over the top. One of the subs is Thomas Gaynor. Thomas Gaynor does well to control the ball. Now he's in a difficult position. He tries to recycle possession. Well anticipated and read there by Luke Mulligan Lynch. Over on the far side, you can sense the urgency now in Dublin Clark's play. They led here from almost pillar to post in this particular game. But uh, at the moment, it seems that Kerry have hit the front, just as all great Kerry teams do late on when it matters most. That's it exactly ever since the sending off their fight has been incredible even in midfield there just to, to block down turnover possession it's absolutely they're being inspired now and it's it's great to see Joe Ryan has taken the free for Dublin but just at those passes they were finding the intended targets earlier in the game it's not just working out as conveniently for them now here is the the game plan has been shaken to the rafters here in the closing X stages Boric O'Sullivan on the attack for Kerry plays the ball inside there towards Michael Kelleher now can he finish off here with a score what sublime skill again he's got the ball up second time of asking and there's the finish and that surely must be it what a goal from Kelleher what brilliant individual skill what a finish into the back of the net oh I tell you something I could look at this all day long the build up play here was absolutely brilliant it seemed that Dublin Clark had got the better of him but he managed to play the ball to himself and finished it to the back of the net oh I tell you something that is magic there were jumps and screams and shouts of delight from the Kerry bench when that goal went in because that I, that has won them the game at this moment. Uh, five points in it now, but what? The, here, here's the close-up of the incident that we're talking about. Oh, just watch what happens here next. 
See what they like of the Kerry player went to Kerry number seven there. Very much involved in Parik O'Sullivan. He stood in the Dublin centre half forward. And I suppose as often nine times out of ten, it's the, the classic case of the player that retaliates, gets caught. Meanwhile, there's another free coming in here for Kerry. Oh, they're in dreamland now. They've just dispatched another one in and over the bar. Well, there's no doubt about it. Kerry are going to be crowned champions here. It turned on a pivotal moment around the sending off where Dublin Clark seemed to lose their composure. But Kerry, despite, well, an no teams have had numerical advantages in the past but they haven't always been able to close games out but just look at the way here the Kerry management are urging their players on late on 3.15 to 5.15 two goals separating the teams here eight goals in this thriller 30 points in this thriller I tell you if you get eight goals and 30 points in every final it's a brilliant brilliant advertisement for this particular competition and here comes Sam Stewart on the attack again he's 45 metres out from goal he's fouled but really at this stage to have to try and drop the ball in around the house and hope that they can get a goal we're well into injury time at the end of the second half here Dublin Clark will need an absolutely miraculous miracle if they can try and pull this one out of the fire Ger Ryan is the man who is preparing to take the free from them they trail here by 60 led for so many long periods in the game referee is going inside as well two minutes I think have been left inside there so it's going to be another opportunity here for them and Ryan is dropping this one in drops it dangerously in around the house we've got about two minutes of injury time to be played here at the end of this game and again it's Kerry who are going to win some possession for themselves and they've got a, an opportunity here once more to try and work the ball out but uh, really this has been a game that's produced everything here yeah and we're actually down to, to 14 yellow. men on, on both teams now because uh, Darren Nolan has been sent off for Kerry uh, so it's all tied up again now Darren Nolan indeed been sent off for Kerry so they're down to 14 mid as well the teams finishing with equal numbers and a shot coming in there but it's been flashed out to the right of the post and white Thomas Gaynor was the player that had the shot Darren Nolan picking up uh, his second yellow that means sends him for an early shower here in O'Connor Park in Tullamore as well but 3.15 to 5.15 what a match we've had here what huge excitement and skill level and drama these two teams have produced an absolutely brilliant contest it's not over yet here here comes Nathan Guerin, scored a goal when Kerry needed it just before half time to keep them in the match. And it's the Dublin goalkeeper who has it once again, gets a quick restart away there. Does Dara Quinn, ball breaks down over towards this near side once more. Possession goes in there for no man's land really, but it's going to be gathered inside here by the centre half back. Jeremy Clerken, Jeremy Clerken, long one drops it in over the top once again. Players waiting for that breaking ball. It's going to come the way here of the, uh, the, the Dublin side once more. Their full forward has it. The full forward is Matthew Lynham, three goals and he could well finish up here on the losing team it's all going to be up to the discretion of the referee how much time he adds on but it's Kerry who have possession here and they're moving forward once again coming forward with plenty of paces Ronan Walsh what a game he's had Ronan Walsh lays it off to Nathan Gurren Nathan Gurren shoots some distance that's surely it now they're celebrating down in the Kerry dugout what a score from Nathan Gurren and you know if that ends up as the last score it's only deserved that he should get it because he has been fantastic he's been a real leader for Kerry he dragged them back in into this game when it looked like Dublin were on the ascendancy and what a score to finish there. Well do not adjust your, your uh, devices at home it's 3.15 to 5.16 it's not over, here come Dublin again they sense that there's an opportunity, line them three goals already, this one's half blocked down, second opportunity, plays it diagonally in towards the edge of the square but Kerry's defence are able to come away with it and the referee has blown the full time whistle, it's a victory for Kerry here, they've come back from the death and just look what it means to their supporters and substitutes who invade the pitch while well, we've witnessed an absolute classic game here fair play to Kerry for coming back and winning it your heart goes out as most to Dublin Clark the sending off was a huge turning point in the game but that was absolutely top class hurling produced by two brilliant teams what a game you won't see any better in Gaelic rounds or Crow Park tomorrow I can tell you that was absolutely fantastic from start to finish the intensity the pace the physicality absolutely fantastic deserved win for Kerry but as you said you'd feel sorry for Dublin Clark because that sending off really did make the difference and Rory O'Neill might feel a little bit hard done by uh, since it was in retaliation but that's the way these things go there are moments like that that just win the game and it's how you respond and Kerry just were um, the far better team in that closing stages 
where do we start maybe to put a highlights package together in this particular game I wish the lads looked trying to do that a little bit later on eight goals in it um, you've had over 30 points the goals were absolutely crucial Nathan Gurren got a couple of a vital one for Kerry just before half time Matthew Lynham scored three for Dublin Clark and ended up in the losing team but the two goals for Kerry either side of the interval that kept them in it at a vital stage yeah it was the timing of the goals that was just as important um, as you said one each side of the half and then that one just after uh, O'Neill sending off they, that was the winning of the game for Kerry that was the first time that they, they got ahead of Dublin Clark and they never let the, the, the finish line out of their sight from that point onwards they had so many wonderful performers right throughout the game one particular standout moment for me will be the goal that Dylan Moriarty scored that high dropping ball in towards the edge of the square one handed finish to the back of the net I tell you something you've seen a slam like that in Wimbledon inside the next couple of weeks you'd say magic yeah absolutely Moriarty was such a key player for them today he really stood up at crucial times when they needed someone to just drag them back into this game himself Colin Walsh Nathan Gearan all so impressive for this Kerry team and uh, some serious serious stars going on uh, down there in, in Kerry Hurling. John Hennessy, their manager, he used the substitutes bench ever so well. Players came in and made a key role, but some of the guys who were there from start to finish kept going. The likes of Murray Archie and another player who I thought was absolutely sublime was Ronan Walsh. He played a massive part in that Kerry comeback and win. Absolutely, yeah. His, his ball winning ability there in the half forward line was key. He drifted out wide, found the space when it was really, really tight and narrow. And uh, he set up so many scores that really proved the difference in the end. And you see the celebrations on the pitch here afterwards. It really means a lot to this Kerry team and their supporters. Uh, as you said earlier on, Kerry uh, seniors got that crucial win over Offaly to remain in the Joe McDonough Cup and this is just another example of how Kerry Hurling is progressing. A brilliant win for them at underage level. No doubt about it, there's a, the Dublin Clark team, they're down under us as well in Aduga. That's confirmation to the full-time scoreline, by the way. 3.15 to 5.16, what a score, what a game and indeed what drama at the end. It's inevitable that people, when it comes to discussing this, will talk about the sending off, the Dublin sending off, especially Rory O'Neill being dismissed and I suppose you could say he had grounds for it there with the incident that uh, took place before before the game with Porrick or Sullivan, but I know we mentioned and touched on it during the commentary. Inevitably, it's always the player that retaliates, seems to get picked up on by the officials. It is. There's always little niggles throughout the game, but it's how you react to them. And unfortunately, he's a young player. He just hit out. He'll learn from that experience. Uh, unfortunately, it looked as though that was the, the winning of the game for Kerry, so he's going to feel that. But he's a young player. He just needs to, to shake it off and move on now, and, and he'll learn from the experience. There's no doubt about that, and indeed so many standout performers of Dublin Clark as well. They played their part in this. Matthew Lynham's goals were brilliantly taken. They had other key performances as well. Jack Keelty came in and out of the game at various intervals. Ger Ryan was tremendous throughout as well. So there was a lot of standout performers there for a Dublin Clark team. And with the look back in this particular game online in years to come, they'll probably wonder how it got away from them. Yeah, you could go back as far as Ben Rogers, and you know the you know he really picked up the pace this game. His puckouts were crucial, and they really won won a lot of ball in that middle third and the half forward line was just on fire the way they linked up play today was fantastic so I've no doubt that these are some future stars for Dublin Well the good news is we've just got two of the six finals that we're showing you live this afternoon completed here and if they all build up to that Derry will be taking on Galway Tribesmen in the next game that's going to be coming up a little bit later on Brendan Hennessy by the way is standing by and we'll be bringing you commentary on that game as well so that's going to be another epic encounter we've just witnessed one of the all time classics here when it comes to finals in this particular competition and uh, what a performance from Dublin Clark and uh, the presentations about to take place there as well and match officials going up they played their part in it you know for a game like this to produce the amount of drama scores incidents that took place it's vital that the referee and the officials let the game develop and that's exactly what took place here yeah he probably felt like he had uh, no choice for uh, the, the two red cards and even over the far side you know there was a, a hint of a high tackle but he fairly gave a yellow card to, to both players and just cut out all, all that kind of crack uh, it'll be interesting now to see who wins best and fairest player from, from both teams because there's so many nominees well, the uh, presentations will be taking place very, very shortly. Indeed, it's a very quick turnaround, first and foremost, uh, from the Dublin Clark team. 
their player who is going to pick up the award and indeed the man that you quite rightly mentioned there, the goalkeeper as well, who was fantastic throughout. Uh, ben Rogers, his restarts, absolutely excellent. Indeed, the speed of his restarts were absolutely fantastic throughout. So he's uh, he's picking up his award there. He'll be followed up very, very shortly by the rest of his teammates to pick up the middles as uh, runners-up for this particular competition. But I'm sure there's a number of these guys you'll see back here again in the Dublin colours and indeed maybe in Crow Park in years to come. Yeah, absolutely. It just shows that Dublin Hurling is on the ascendancy. Uh, great to see the work being put in underage and, and this just shows um, their, you know, their under-20s last year in the week to Offaly but it just shows that uh, their under-17s are really, really competitive and those players are only going to uh, get better as they get on. What a moment as well for Colin Walsh. He's the next player up there for Kerry. We identified him in the commentary as one of the key performers, perhaps along with Dylan Moriarty. But the workload that he got through here today, his contribution was absolutely huge. Yeah, and there was a lot of work, work off the ball that you mightn't have seen on camera. Uh, he was putting in huge, huge shifts there in, in that half forward line, drifting out, as I said, to, to win possession. Linked up brilliantly with uh, Gearin to set up the goal, to set up a couple of Gearin's points in the first half. So I'm delighted to see him getting the best and fairest player he really deserves it and the Dublin team making their way up onto the steps obviously it's going to be bittersweet memories for them they've had a fantastic run in getting all the way to the final but they are going to be disappointed there as Rory O'Neill brings them forward to receive their middles there's their midfielder in shot as well Sam Stewart working all the way in there to Ben English as well and Dublin players who have I suppose worked so hard for the team to get here just as sometimes finals as Owen Behan will testify they either go for you or sometimes they go against you unfortunately that's proven to be the case this time round. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that there had to be a loser in today's game because it was absolutely fantastic from start to finish. The skill, the scoring, uh, the physicality from this game, uh, from this team was fantastic. Uh, very clever play as well, really mature guys. Um, so they'll learn from this and they'll come back next year stronger. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. They are going to take so many memories away from this as the players continue to go up there. Jeremy Clark in their centre half back, the number 17 there in camera shot as well, Liam Glenn, as uh, more and more of the Dublin players just make their way onto the podium here for the presentation, and they will be followed very, very quickly indeed by the victorious team from Kerry, who have won this title here today and uh, have really produced a five-star performance. They'll probably talk about it for many years to come, the day that a Kerry team came up here and uh, outscored Dublin in an absolute classic in this particular final. So the last of the Dublin players making their way on to the stand at the moment. The two teams, by the way, coming out and and uh, starting their warm-up procedures for the set, for the next final, their Derry and Galway. That's coming up very, very shortly indeed. And you won't miss a moment of the action from there as we just wait to stay with this now for the presentation of the Kerry team to pick up their middles. And I suppose uh, for Kerry, Hurling will always maybe play second part to football down in the county. But, you know, when you've got players of this calibre coming through the ranks, you can see that Kerry Hurling is going to be competitive at Christie Ring and they'd love to move up another level. Yeah, it's hugely exciting for them. Um, you can see the work that's been put in underage and it's really paying dividends. It's an exciting time for Kerry Hurling. Uh, you know, there's, there's investment going in there and there's great resources and they have brilliant people driving it and, and that's what's brought them here today. Yeah, it's a proud day indeed for the Kerry team, for the manager, John Hennessy, uh, Ali Brogdon, Jeremy O'Sullivan, John Healy, Anthony Feely and William Quinlan all involved in that Kerry backroom team and it's certainly been a historic day here for them in Bordnamona, Connor Park and Tullamore and right now is the moment where people from all over the kingdom are going to be looking forward to a, a familiar sight of the, the history annuals of the GAA when a team in green and gold begin to march up the steps. Normally we witness it maybe in the Hogan stand and traditionally it might have been on the third Sunday in September. That uh, ritual seems to have gone to Dublin in recent years but right now it's the foot well that's in football but the hurlers of Kerry right now moving up the steps and they are being led there by their number 15 Michael Kelleher who played a huge part in the victory today Kelleher about there to pick up his medal he's the, the first player to pick up his medal the team skipper will be going up of course last to pick up the silverware but my word it's been some day here for the Kerry hurlers and I suppose so many individual standout performers but a great team ethos and a, a huge work ethic also massive contributing factors to this win. Yeah, and also uh, the players who came on also played their roles as well. It was a complete panel effort here today and it, you know, it was kudos to the management who, who got their team right. They never gave up. Dublin went six ahead. Kerry came back. It might have been the goals that 
that changed the game for him. But it was the way they set up the goals, the way they played for each other. It was fantastic to see. There was such heart um, and, and a character running through this team and uh, fully deserving of their win in the end. Epitomised there by Dara Slattery as well, their number three, their full back, who has uh, just picked up his middle as they walk the way down through the team. Conor O'Sullivan, the number 11, absolutely immense throughout the game as well. And he worked so hard to make sure that this Kerry team were going to be successful. Graham Slattery there, number 23 in shot. So too is Ty Green, the number 25. There's the wing forward. Ronan Walt played his part in the victory as well. Number 19 there is Owen O'Shea as the Kerry players make their way with Liam Palmer slowly up there to pick up the silverware for them. But it's been a, a game where they've absolutely produced everything. Had to show real character, real desire. It looked for many stages during the match that they were maybe in trouble, but they came back when it mattered most. That's their goalkeeper, Dara Quinlan who played his part as well and their midfielder Dylan Moriarty their number 8 one of the standout performers from them and I know we've touched on it a couple of times with his goal came at a crucial stage and that will kept them in the game there's Colin Walsh the number 14 and the last man there the number 16 to pick up uh, his middle there as well for Kerry Michael Clifford and indeed the silverware about to be presented and here it comes now the moment that this young Kerry team will remember for quite some time to come Clifford about to receive the trophy. And there you have it, Kerry are the champions. Yeah, great to see them winning the current John Scott. Fully deserved, and you can see how much it means to this team and to the management. A uh, hugely exciting day for them. Absolutely magnificent day for them. Let's see if we can maybe, when the victory speech comes over, we'll be handing over maybe to try and get the immediate afterthoughts there of the Kerry players. What a day for them. It's been a, a fantastic comeback story for them. A game where they were pushed literally to the pin of their collar. Right now, here comes the speech. And Martin Fogarty there was involved with the presentation. Okay, so I don't think we're going to have a speech on this particular one, but nonetheless, they let their well, they did their talking on the pitch to Kerry team. They've won this game, an absolute classic. Kerry, five goals and 16 points. Dublin Clark, three goals and 15. More finals to come here on Pundit Arena, but for the moment, congratulations to Kerry and commemorations goes to Dublin Clark.